So in today's lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to shift to looking at quadratic functions in factored form. And what we're going to try to do is to relate the roots of a quadratic function to its factored form. So normally in class, I would have you do an investigation to try with using Desmos uh, to try and discover any patterns that you might see, but instead we're going to do that together in this video. Okay, so hopefully you can tell from our factoring section of the chapter uh, that this quadratic here is in fact in factored form. So if you can manage to get a quadratic function that is in standard form and factor it, then that should help you to discover something about its roots. And so I'm going to pull up Desmos in a minute here and we're going to do some investigating. Okay, so I've pulled up Desmos here in a browser and I've gone ahead and written out that general form that we have we saw in that factored form for a quadratic function. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to model this form by putting in an equation uh, that will get graphed by the Desmos. And what you're going to see is hopefully a connection between what the function that I put in is and what the roots are. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to put in y, oops, let me see if I can do this here, y equals, I'm going to make the value of a 1, so bracket, and I'm going to go x minus 1 bracket, and then x minus, let's go 5, and then bracket. Now let's take a look at the graph. So right now I'm seeing that this function, where the value of r, I would say, would be 1. And the value of s would be 5. Not negative 1 and not negative 5 because of course the formula already has a negative in it, right? So I've just subbed in a value for r and the value I've subbed in is 1 and the value I've subbed in for s is 5. So let's take a look at where our roots or our x-intercepts are. Well, lo and behold, there is our root at x equals 1 and our other root at x equals 5. Well, isn't that interesting? So let's see if this works again. What I'm seeing so far is that the value of r and the value of s seems to tell me where my roots are. But let's, let's just um, try that again. Let me see if I can try this again here. I'm going to try it with a different function. Let me see if I can move this writing out of the way. No. Okay. Okay, so I've uh, taken the liberty of putting in an, a second quadratic function. And what I'm seeing here is, um, so this is what I chose. I chose x minus 2 and x plus 4. So let's examine what the values are for r and for s in this function. Well, uh, the value of r, it looks like, is 2. Well, what would the value of s need to be to have me have in this bracket x plus 4? Well, um, I can sort of think of it, well, it looks to me like the value of r, s has to be negative 4. Because if I had x minus whatever s is, the only way I would make that positive would be if I had another negative in there. And those two would combine to make it a positive. So let's see then if our initial hypothesis about r and s being the roots holds true for this second function. Well, if I go ahead and I look at my graph, I can see very clearly that the roots are indeed at negative 4, negative 4, and positive 2, positive 2. So there we have it. That is the function of r and s in our factored form of the quadratic function. Let's go back to the lesson. So to fill in this giant blank, 
I would say that a relation in this form right here will always have roots at, uh, at r, at x equals r, that's one root, and x equals s, and that's it. Now you need to know that this is a very simplified form, and that if it doesn't have the form x minus r and x minus s, in other words, if there's a coefficient besides x that is uh, like beside x that is not one, then this does not hold true, and that's something that we're going to visit a little bit later on in the unit. So I want you to take a minute right now. And um, just to check for your own comprehension and say, well, what would the roots be for this e uh, quadratic function written in factored form? So I'm hoping you can see that I have x, this is taking that form um, of x minus r and x minus s. I can see here that there's a value of 4 here, and since this is plus 5, that also indicates what the roots are. And so I can tell that my x-intercepts are going to be, or my roots are going to be, x equals 4, and that x is equal to negative 5. Now, the great thing about this is that by knowing the roots, that actually gives us a second uh, alternative when we're looking at graphing quadratic functions. And so that's where we're going to go next with this. So if the roots are known, we can also find the vertex. Uh, and together, we're going to use those three coordinates, the one, two roots that are possibly there, and the vertex. And, uh, and that's going to help us to pro uh, provide us with a different way of graphing a quadratic function other than using our transformations, which can be a little bit sticky sometimes. And so before we get into the specific steps that I'm going to outline for you, um, I want to, you know, I want to just point out a couple of things that you already know but maybe haven't put together. So I'm going to draw like a sample quadratic function here. I'm just going to sketch it out right? And um, I'm just going to say, let's say, for instance, that this value right here, this was at, my root was at x equals 2. And let's just say that this value right here is x equals 4. So this root right here is at x, x equals 4. Well, I know that there's this magical line that divides my parabola into the axis of symmetry. And I also know that the axis of symmetry is um, has to pass through the vertex, right? So there's a value here for the vertex that I can come up with uh, as long as I know where my roots are. Because, well, I want you to take a guess. What would the x value of my vertex have to be for this particular example? Well, what I'm hoping you're thinking about is the fact that the roots are at x equals 2 and x equals 4. Since my axis of symmetry is splitting this parabola in two, the value for x at the vertex here, that has to be at x equals 3. So all of a sudden, I have a coordinate for my vertex at x equals 3. Now, the only part of that vertex that I don't know is y. So that is, you know, that is essentially the strategy that I'm going to use in order to graph quadratics using the roots. Right? I have three coordinates that are a great starting point to graphing. So let's break this down in some steps. All right, so now we're going to break this down into some steps for you. Uh, so what I've done is I've just um, grabbed a picture of a graph from Desmos, just a Cart Cartesian plane for us to start with. So the first thing that you always want to do is you want to determine the roots and plot them. So what can I tell so far from this equation? Well, um, I can tell right now that the, you know, based on the values of r and s, I can tell that the value of r is negative 1 and the value of s is positive 7. And so that tells me right off the bat what my roots are. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot them. So I have one root at negative 1 and I have another root at positive 7. Now, take a minute to think about, well, what did we do next? Well, 
Um, the numbers aren't always so nice, but so that's good to have a bit of a strategy. What we're going to do is we're going to find the midpoint between the two roots, and that will give us the x coordinate of our vertex, right? We know that roughly once we find out the point, the midpoint between these two, that our vertex is going to be along that line, right? And so how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to basically find the average between these two points. So I'm going to do that. So I know that negative 1 plus 7, and I'm going to divide that in two. I'm going to find the average between those two. So that's going to give me 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So if I go ahead and I'm, I'm just going to kind of do a rough plot of where that is, let's to kind of see. Well, 1, 2, 3. Does that look like it's the midway between those two roots? Yes, it is. So that tells me that my axis of symmetry is going to be along this line here. And my vertex, therefore, should be along that line somewhere. Now, there is a stretch factor here. And so, you know, based on that, it's really tough to say right off the bat where, um, where that vertex is going to be. Um, but now I certainly know that the vertex, the x coordinate of the vertex is going to be at x equals 3. So now, now that I know that the x coordinate of the vertex has to be at x equals 3, well, that's useful because now I know that the vertex is a point on that line. So my original function over here, y, this guy up here, I know that if I sub in x equals 3 into for x, wherever x appears, then that should give me the corresponding value for y. And in so doing, I will have the coordinate of the vertex. If you're not with me right now, just follow along. So what we're going to do is we're going to sub in the x value of the vertex. In this case, that was x equals 3, and I got that by finding the midpoint between the two roots. I'm going to sub that into my equation to get the corresponding y coordinate of the vertex, and then I can, and then I can plot it. So I'm going to do that. So my original function was y equals 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 7. And I'm going to sub in x equals 3. So 2 times 3 plus 1 times 3 minus 7. And let's clean that up. So y equals 2 times 4 times negative 4. So y is equal to negative 32. So now I have a coordinate for my vertex and I'm realizing that my graph is woefully inadequate because my vertex, it looks like, is at 3 and negative 32. But if I had picked a graph that was a little bit larger, I would be easily to go, able to go ahead and find that negative 32 somewhere way down here and, and then finish my curve. There we go. Okay, so here's a different type of example. I'm hoping that based on work that we've done previously in the unit that you might be able to extrapolate on that and, and try to solve it. So I'd encourage you to pause this video and try the question. The question is, determine an equation in the form y equals a times x minus r times x minus s to represent the following parabola. Now, you could perhaps, based on what you know already, in vertex form, get an equation, but we want it to be in this factored form. So knowing what our roots are, that is super helpful. So when I look at this, I can see that I have roots at x equals 2, and I have a root at x equals negative 6. So that gives me values for r and for s in whichever order you want, right? And so right off the bat, I can go ahead and sub those values in for r and for s. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So x minus 2 and then x minus negative 6, which is, of course, x plus 6. 
So now I'm not done, and the reason I'm not done is because I have not solved for a. And so in this case, the way that I'm going to get that stretch factor for this function, because this is the same a as we saw when we were looking at transformations, is that I can sub in any known coordinate for y and for x in both cases uh, in order to solve for a. And so I'm going to choose any value that looks like it's nice and clean on my function. Um, so I typically would encourage you to pick positive numbers, um, but it looks to me like I am going to go ahead and choose my vertex here, which happens to be at negative 2 and negative 8. So I'm going to go ahead and sub those in. So I would end up with negative 8 is equal to a times negative 2 minus 2 more, and then negative 2 plus 6. And again, that's just me subbing in negative 2 for my x and negative 8 for my y. And let me, let me clean that up now. So I would have negative, oops, negative 8 is equal to a times negative 4 times positive 4. Negative 8 is equal to a times negative 16, which I can also write as negative 8 is equal to negative 16a. Dividing out my negative 16, then I can see that that reduces to 1 half. So I'm going to leave that as a fraction, um, but you could choose to write that as 0.5 if you wanted to. So a is equal to 1 half. So now the thing that students often forget to do is that you need to go ahead and you need to sub that value in back to get your equation because the question wasn't find the value of a. The question was write an equation or determine an equation. So my equation ends up being, and this is, I'm going to put this in a nice uh, big box here. This is what my equation ends up being. It's y equals 1 half x minus 2 and x plus 6. And there it is in factored form. Uh, so I hope that example made sense to you. And if you attempted it yourself, I, I'm hoping that you were successful. And if you weren't, Hopefully you kind of can figure out where your missteps were. Um, so I have a few questions that I want you to try in your homework. Uh, it'll be a teacher by, by way of a teacher handout um, found in a different textbook. And so here will be the questions that you should look for and attempt.